Sing, sing to the power of the Lord. Come down, oh, let us sing to the power of the Lord. Come down, lift up your head. Don't be afraid. Let us sing to the power of the Lord. Come down, oh, let us shout, shout to the power of the Lord. Come down and let us Shout to the power of the Lord. Come down, lift up your head, and don't be afraid. Let us shout to the power of the Lord. Come down and let us love, love to the power of the Lord. Come down, let us love to the power of the Lord. Come down, lift up your head, and don't be afraid, and let us love to the power of the Lord. Come down, let us read, read to the power of the Lord. Come down, and let us read to the power of the Lord. Come down, lift up your head, and don't be afraid, and let us Read to the power of the Lord. Come down, oh, let us sing, sing to the power of the Lord. Come down, let us sing to the power of the Lord. Come, lift up your head. Don't be afraid. And let us sing to the power of the Lord. Come down. Praise God. Amen. We thank and praise the Lord. Amen. For being into the house of the Lord. Amen. One more time. Amen. Find a blessing and a privilege. Amen. To be in the house of God. And so we thank all of you who are here in our presence and those who may be tuned in by social media. We thank God for you today. And God has just been good to us. And so we're going to go to the throne of grace and we're going to ask God's blessings upon our lives and upon our days. But we want to let him know that we're grateful for what he has done even unto us. God, we thank you today. We bless and we praise your name, dear God. We thank you, God, for all that thou hast provided. God, you made way out of no way. And we thank you today. We bless your name even right now, God, for you have been good to us God and so we just come back to give you glory and we come back to tell you thank you thank you for all that your hands have provided thank you God for what you've done uh, thank you God for bringing out of us out of darkness into this marvelous light we thank you this morning God for you have been good to us God uh, oh God every situation every problem you've helped us out oh God you've seen us through God you gave us the wherewithal that we might make it oh God even unto this day. God, we bless your name and we lift you up, God. Uh, oh, God, know the help we have. Uh, know the help we know today, God, but thine unchanging hand, oh, God. Uh, we thank you even right now, uh, oh, God, for the activity of our bodies, oh, God. We thank you for a mind, God. Uh, thank you, God, for a lift, oh, God, a voice to praise you and to magnify your name. And so, God, we praise you today. Uh, we magnify your name today. We come, oh, God, offering up the sacrifice sacrifice of praise, oh God, we praise you now, uh, and we thank you, God, you've been good to us, uh, oh God, right now, uh, I ask you to bless us today, let your will be done today, uh, down in our lives, oh God, uh, we say yes to your will, oh God, uh, we say yes to your way, oh God, uh, we say yes today, oh God, uh, right now in our hearts, we say yes, God, uh, well, you've been good to us, Lord. You brought us out, oh God. Uh, what a strong right arm. You brought us out, God. Uh, oh, God, we thank you now. Uh, we give you praise and we give you glory. Uh, oh, God. Uh, someone said my praise is for real. Uh, this thing is for real, God, and we thank you. Uh, we love you this morning, God. Uh, have your way down in our soul today. Uh, oh, God, search our minds. Uh, search our hearts today, God. Uh, oh, God, and lift us up. Uh, lift the hearts 
hearts up today and lift our minds up today, oh God. Uh, oh God, we're looking unto Jesus, uh, the author and the finisher of our faith this morning. We need your help, God. Uh, we need your hand touched today, God. Uh, touch us, oh God, from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet, God. We need you in a mighty way. We need you, God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, touch the preached word, oh God. Uh, touch the preached word as it comes forth, God. Every song, oh God. Uh, God, we love you today. Uh, God, we reverence you today, God. Uh, you've been good to us, Lord. Uh, oh God, and we praise your name. Uh, we lift you up, God. Uh, oh, no other hope, oh God. Uh, no other hope, God. Uh, we have but thee, oh God. Uh, no other hope, oh God. Uh, oh God, uh, touch our hearts today. Yes, yes. Help us, God, that we might rejoice uh, in the horn of our salvation. We thank you. Oh, God, thank you for the living God. Uh, oh, God, we love you. Even right now, God, uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, God. Uh, thank you, God. Uh, thank you, God. Uh, amen. And amen. We're going to read in your hearing this morning uh, Psalm 113. 113 in its entirety. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like unto the Lord our God, who dwelleth on high, who humbleth himself, uh, and behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth? He rises, he raises up the poor out of the dust, and lifteth up the needy out of the dung hill, that he may set him with princes, even with the prince of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. We praise God this morning. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearers of his word at this time. Amen. Sister Jones is going to come, and she's going to lead us in a few songs of praise. Amen. All right. Today will be... The best day, the best day of my life today will be the best day, the best day of my life today will be the best day, the best day of my life today will be the best day, the best day, day, day. day. I get my joy back. Today, I'm getting my joy back. Today, best day of my life today will be the best day, the best day of my life today will be the best day, the best day. I'm getting my peace back today I'm getting my peace back today the best day of my life today will be the best day the best day of my life today will be the best day the best day of my life I'm getting my joy back today the best day of my I'm getting my joy back today the best day of I'm getting my peace back today the best day of my life the best day of my life the best day of my life. The best day of my life. The best day of my life. It's gonna be a best day of my life. 
I'm getting my joy back today. I'm getting my peace back today. The best day of my life. Come on, y'all. Give God some hand praise. Yes, Lord. Yes. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I love you again. Yes. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you, and I lift you up, and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you and I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. That's why my heart is filled with praise. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Just take some time just to meditate with God right now. Because he's been so good to us so good to us we we went through the whole week this week trials and tribulations but we have came back to the place of refuge and so we just want to say thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord not for what you not only for what you've done but what you're going to do thank you lord we praise your name on today we thank you we thank you we thank you. We appreciate you. A thank you goes a long way. A thank you shows appreciation. A thank you says I noticed what you've done. A thank you shows that I don't. I, it does. It goes not unnoticed. So I thank you, Lord, for what you have done, despite what I've gone through. I thank you, Lord, for what you have done. Yes, you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. My hallelujah belongs to you. How many of your hallelujahs belong to him today? My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Come on, my hallelujah 
belongs to you. Yes, my hallelujah belongs to you. One more time, my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Yes. And my hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. 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 Yes. You deserve it. Come on, say. Give some hand praise to the Lord. And the day that the Lord has made. Praise God. And we're happy and we thank God for all that He has done for us. I want to say we thank God for all of our supporters, your time, talent, and treasure. We thank God for you today. Thank you for all that you do for the city of David. Praise God. Amen. We thank God for all that God is doing in our lives. For He is doing great things in our lives. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm looking forward, amen, to what God has in store for me. Praise God. My hope, amen, is in God. Praise God. Amen. My heartbeat is God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because I want great things, amen, from God. For He is a great God. He sitteth high and He sit low. Praise God. He's able, praise God, to cause the sun just to stop in His tracks. He ha He's able, praise God, to cause 
the water to back up on both sides. He is able, praise God, to cause the donkey to speak. He is able, amen, to do that more and abundantly in our lives. Praise God. We just have to produce the faith in God. We have to produce the expectation in God. Uh -huh. Some folks want to just sit back and wait for it to happen. But I want to be like David in our lesson. I want to get in the battle so I might see the glory of God. That I might see, amen, the wonderfulness of God. I want to see the effects of God in my life. Because God, he is a great God. Praise the Lord. Amen. He, we have this celebration. Yes, sir. This is a time that we celebrate the celebration of love, that God, amen, we didn't say he came this day, but this is what we celebrate, amen, the birth of Christ, that God has sent the promise of Israel, my God, that, that he sent the promise of Israel that, amen, we won't have to go, amen, to hell for our sins, that we have a mighty deliverer, amen, that was born in a virgin birth, praise God, and so we celebrate, amen, this month, the month of love. Uh, the month that God had showed, amen, to us. The compassion, God, God could have said, no, nah, I'm not including nobody in this. I have my chosen people, and that's all it is. My four and no more, praise God. But God said, I'm going to open up my heart to the whole world, that the whole world may come in and feel my love and be a part, amen, of all this that I have to offer. Isn't it wonderful that we can be partakers in all that God has to offer? Praise God. I thank God for it on today. Praise God. Boy, it's not amen what I can do, but it's what God can do. Praise God. Amen. For we, amen, trust in the Lord and we count on God. Praise God to do all that we need done in our lives. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now today, man, Elder Harrison is going to come, and he's going to bring forth the word of God to us. Amen. Praise God. I would pray that you would sit attentively and open up your heart. Empty out, praise God. Sometimes we, we come with so much on us, but empty out today that uh, the word of God may be able to pour, be poured into us. Praise God. Because mind you, when we leave this place and leave these four walls, praise God, we still have an enemy that we have to face. That's why we come to the house of God, that we might come, praise the Lord, amen, and hear a word from the Lord, that it might console us, that it might give us hope praise God amen we hope in God praise the Lord amen we hope it in God and so in that that's why we walk with the great assurance that we do praise God because God amen is a healer and he is a deliverer praise God he said he that calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved praise God amen all all it takes is a call uh, girl call me up brother call me up all we have to do is call up on the name of the Lord and God will come and answer Answer, praise God. All we is just take a call. Praise God. Amen. Don't cost you nothing but a call. Praise God. Used to cost a dime, and then it used to cost thirty-five cents. Praise God. But all it, it takes is just a call. Uh, I gotta make a phone call. Hold it in just a minute. I I gotta go uh, push away. I gotta go to a side just for a minute. Uh, where you going? I, I gotta go make a telephone call because I'm going through right now. I I can't see my way, but it's just gonna take one phone call. Hold it if you will, just right there for a minute. Put the brakes on it because I, I gotta make this important call because I'm going through some things in life that I don't know how to handle and I don't know how I'm gonna go through it. But hold on, just let me make a call. Uh, let me just make this quick call, and it, it don't have to be an all-day call, and it, it don't have to be a half an hour call. All we got to do is say, Jesus, and he, he's right there on the spot, and he's right there on the money. Praise God. It only takes a call. Praise God. My God from heaven. All it takes is a call, and he's assured us that he will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. Praise God. Amen. So at this time, Ella Harris is going to come and bring forth the word of life that we might live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. My God, at this time, Ella Harrison's calling. God bless you. Amen. amen, amen. It just takes one call. Amen. The stone goes, you don't know my story. All the things that I've been through. You can't feel my pain. What I had to go through to get here. Yeah. 
You'll never understand my praise. So don't try to figure it out. Because my worship, <laughs> my worship is for real. You know, it takes a village to raise a child. But it takes a village to follow a leader. No man is an island to himself. Because if you're an island to yourself, you ain't no good to no one else. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, while we bask in your presence and in your glory, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would show up and show out. Holy Spirit, allow me to speak every word that you would have me to speak to the hearer, that they would hear and be healed, that they would hear and be delivered, that they would hear and be set free because you are here to do it. For us, do it, God, like never before. Lord, as the pastor says, that there is a great expectancy of you in our lives, oh God. And we worship you and we praise you for real. In Jesus' name we pray. Send your word. Send your health, your healing, and your prosperity. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Amen. This is, I'm going to try to be short. I'm going to try to be short. So let me uh, get started. We're going to come out of St. John's chapter 15. And as I was uh, thinking and <coughs> contemplating and praying and seeking, and I kept telling a uh, missionary, I says, I don't know what God is going to do. And she says, oh, stop it, you know. Uh, you know, stop, you know, stop it. You always say that. No, I, yeah, because it's real. The, how are you led by the Spirit when you never seek the Spirit? And a lot of us says, oh, yeah, oh, God's got me, but how do God has you when you can't obey God in the first place? I've asked several uh, people this question. How is he your Lord and Savior when you cannot obey the decrees and the commandment of your Lord and Savior? Then how is he your Lord and Savior? Your salvation comes through the obedience of his word. And so we, I hope that we would bring out uh, in this kingdom building process uh, about being connected. Are you connected? That's a question you have to ask yourself today. Are you connected? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I got to be honest with you, that was a personal question for me. Am I connected? We take for granted uh, the things that we have because everybody owes us or everything is due to me because of what? No, it doesn't work like that way. But I, I, I guarantee once it's gone, you'll understand the necessity of being in tune of what's going on in your life right now. As I, I, I drive, I, I, a lot of times uh, I don't wait to, I wait to after they get ready to get out of the car to tell them I'm blind. I don't tell them I'm blind when they first get in the car. I have to wait till they get out the car. You know, the end of my testimony, oh yeah, and I lost my sight. But now I don't take what I have for granted, so let me look while I can look. Let me see while I can see. I've already lost one of them. I don't have time to take it for granted. So while I can drive, baby, I'm going to drive. While I can see, I'm going to see. While I can shop and pick what I want, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to enjoy the activity of my eye. I always joke with uh, Pastor Jones and I tell him if he just 
Loan me one of his eyes and one of his hands, and I'd have two. And then I get specific with him, and I say, well, I want you to loan me the right eye and the right hand. He said, well, brother, I think you're going to do just fine without him. <laughs> because it's a very valuable commodity to them that don't have. You'll understand. I don't want this on any man. People say, I wish I was like you. No. You don't understand my worship. You don't understand my praise. You don't understand what it took for me to get here. I didn't get here because uh, uh, it was easy peasy. Uh, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth and it just came and I'm just up here because I can. No, this praise and this worship had to be cultivated because of a thick skull that I had. I had to go through some things that God will remind me, my Lord, my Lord. you still belong to me. Yes. I, I understand Job's his worry. I understand his his confusion, his his wonder. God, after all I've done, I get up day in and day out. I give sacrifice for my children. I praise you. I I I, I try to. Do everything right by every man, woman, boy, or girl, and yet this happened. I know you know I tried to live good. You know I tried to live holy. You know I tried to do the right thing, and this happened. But sometimes we just don't understand that God has a plan. And his plan is to exalt you, baby. Right. You're not going through what you're going through because, wait, God doesn't have a plan. Here's the right. question. Right. How much do you want it? How bad do you want this salvation? How bad do you want to get to eternity? Because if you want it bad enough, you're going to go through it. It's a tragedy that we'll go through the mess for a woman, but we won't go through it for God. You'll go through it for a man, but you won't go through it for God. Mm. There's a great disconnect that has taken place in the house of God. Everybody's teaching a different gospel. No one, a man no longer is a man. He can choose to be anything else, uh, both uh, at the same time or the opposite, or, oh, I'm just out of this world, loose here. There's a great disconnect because we have allowed sin to sit in the church without being challenged. And we're wondering what's going on. But he, he reminds us in Psalms 37, he says, fret not. That you see evildoers prosper. Don't worry about it, what it looks like they have. Yeah, they might got that new car, baby. But guess what? Yours is on the way. You just have not found out how to get it yet. All right. I'm testifying to somebody. I'm testifying. I had a Shanita. And I think she was born, born past Shanita. <laughs> She would, you know, we was just wearing the black suits and, you know, doing all the, you know, we was like putting it in the grave because that, that joker was just dead. Wait, 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 don't you get it? It might have been dead. That's because God was going to bless me with something else. Right. Woo! Right. Get this. And that ain't the end of the story. It's going to get even better. All right. But the tragedy is that you don't know it and you don't speak it because you don't believe it. It's like you believe, you say, uh, well, that's my wife. Missionary Harrison is my wife, but yet I still didn't go through the formalities that God asked me to go through by vowing my life to her in the name of God. So I, I, I want my cake and ice cream without me having to do anything up with it. I don't have to bake the cake. I don't have to go to the store to buy the ice cream. Uh, yeah, you just bring it to me, and then you dip it up in the bowl. You put it on the spoon. Wait, wait, loose here. 
You have to go through the works in order for the process to manifest itself. It's not the, the beginning is whatever you speak in your mouth. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And if you speak life, life is on its way. But if you speak death after you speak life, then you have canceled it out. You just aborted your dream. But you know, we're good at aborting stuff, huh? We kill anything at the drop of a dime. There's no value in anything. So what is my dream? What is my destiny? I can kill it too because, wait, it's somebody else's fault that I'm in this situation. Uh, we need to stop aborting our destiny. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. And if you just heard that, what have you spoken in your life right. today? Yeah, yeah. St. John 15. I'm going to read the first five verses, and then, then we're going to go through some Old Testament scripture. If, if y'all don't mind, I'm going to be try to be brief, but I want to give you what the, the Holy Spirit is trying to give you something. The question is, will you get it while you're here? The reason why you don't get the word that you're trying, that you need, is because, you know, you, you're already thinking about Bart's Pizza, for some of you. Some of us is already thinking about Gator at Papa Do's. You know, we, we're thinking about everything else. We're thinking, about, you know, first lady was talking about those, uh, those apple fritters this morning. You know, whoo! But, you know, <laughs> loose here. I need you to clear your minds and heart so that you can receive that word this morning. And and if you will receive it, God will surely bring it to pass. I don't know what you need and you're seeking God for, but it's on its way. I'm reading St. John, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 5. He says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purge it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Yeah. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. Verse 5 says, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and observing of his holy, precious word. There's, there's one thing I want to ask. There's a question I needed to ask uh, everyone that's under the sound of my voice. How many of you have walked to an apple orchard and just saw one apple sticking up out of the ground because it's by itself? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's impossible because the apple would not be able to sustain itself. All right. And if it was under the ground, it would rot. Mm -hmm. So an apple is never just by itself or an orange or a pear or a peach or a plum. Why? Because it's not designed that way. It has to be connected to right. something that it will produce. Right. But here's the kicker. It does not just produce one apple. Right. The blessing that you, the fruit that you're going to bear is more than just one. If you look around the room, you already got three of them. You, you, you catch it? The fruit that you bear it's not just one, it's a continuous process because in you is the life. God created you that you would represent and produce himself. 
but we too busy producing me, myself, and I that we're unfruitful in the things of God. Do y'all hear the alarm going off? Where's your fruit level at? Was that an accident or a coincidence? Where's your fruit level? Ding, 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 ding. The buzzer should be going off. Where's your fruit level? Here's the, here's the thing is, uh, I, I was looking at how uh, this morning I was telling my wife uh, that uh, this situation might be because God is dealing with my patience. But my patience that he's dealing with me is not just for me. My patience is so that I can be patient with my wife. My, he's dealing with my patience through everything else is so that I can be patient with my children. My patience dealing with not just with me, my wife, and my children, but that I can deal with the patience of my pastor, my church family, of the district, the jurisdiction, the national level. Not, not just that, but the people who get in the car and say everything. Don't you know so many different spirits come across? your path every day and if you don't have the patience enough within yourself they will jump on you because you're not paying attention to what's going on patience is very important God is trying to work on you on something because the fruit that is going to bear will be great. And you will reap that fruit and that harvest in the kingdom of God. He says, my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Right. Here's the funny thing is, how is it once saved, always saved? Did, am I the only one that read that? Let me, did, did y'all read that with me? Or did y'all hear me read that from the word of God, that, that very excerpt? It says, every branch, that, uh, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Jesus didn't say, I, I throw you away. He says the Father will automatically, because you are not profitable, take you away because what are you there for? You're just taking up space. What are you doing? Why are you calling yourself to be a child of God when God can't tell you to do anything? He can't get you to humble yourself before him, let alone before anyone else. The reason God gives us a structure for such as parents is so that if we learn to obey our parent, then we learn to obey our parent. But we still don't get that. Well, I want them to be free-spirited. And uh, I want them to have, do whatever is best for them. Don't you know hell enlarges her mouth daily? Every day it's getting bigger because freedom is not your friend. All right. If God gives you rules and instructions and commandments, why is it? that we teach that there's no rules, instruction, or commandment. We want to decentralize the police department. I didn't say there's no bad cops, but you mean you don't want the presence of the law to be enforced and to be seen? You would mess that up for what? For what purpose? We need them. My wife and my girls drive freely without the worry of someone doing something wrong to them. This is not the wild, wild west. God has elevated us. He says we don't live by the law, but we establish the law. The reason why good things happen is because God tells us what to do if we are hearing the Father speak through the Son that's speaking to us through the Holy Ghost, then we establish the law, not go against the law. Now, correction, let's make sure you understand what law am I talking about? The law of God. Yeah. See, 
When we talk about not obeying the law, we're talking about the law of man. See, man's nature say, oh, I can do whatever I want to do. But that's not what God's nature says. In order for us to be elevated into the next level, we have to learn to follow instruction. Mm -hmm. How many of you as a baby came out feeding yourself? Mm -hmm. Anybody raise your hand because I want to make some money off of you. Okay. There's a reason why you have to take that place. As a baby, you don't know. Right. Why do we have 20-year-olds talking about I'm this great demon slayer and... Wait, hold up. Baby, you have to learn what that means first. You don't just do something. And even you got 50-year-olds that don't know what they're doing. That's why he says, hey, wait, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you again? Wait, wait, what did you do that I should be afraid of right, you? Right. Because do you praise me in the midnight hour? Do you worship me in, in spite of what's going on in your life? Have you obeyed the first law of God that I would be afraid of you? And that's to love the Lord your God with all your soul, your heart, and your might. If you got to that point, then you would understand that God cannot lie. So you saying I love God does not cause you to be disobedient and disrespectful on this hand. And you talking about I love God in this hand. Wait, wait, wait. In other words, to obey God, you have to read God's word and then apply it to your, your life, not someone else's life. Yeah, I could go and anoint Jones and say, oh, Jones, you're going to get this brand new Ford Focus. But now, would that be true? He says a prophet, you'll know a prophet because what he says, what? Will come to pass. Hmm. But if you're doing nothing at all, the scripture has already noted that you're not in God. He says every now now he says every branch that bears fruit, he purges it. Why does he purge it? That it will bring more fruit. So here's how the purge works. We got that tree. What was that tree in, the, in our front yard? I think it's a magnolia tree. It's got the big old hard coarse leaves and uh, my, my lawnmower won't cut it. Huh? Yeah, yeah. A magnolia tree. And so when you get that magnolia tree, that tree, it got these big old seeds that they just drop, but it makes this big old beautiful flower, first lady. It's white. It's a big flower, but it only lasts about a week, then it dies. But here's what my wife taught me in her gardening. You got to pull off those lower branches because if you don't, then the upper branches will not produce like it should. All right. So once you see that those lower branches growing out, you got to purge it. You got to prune it. You got to cut it off so that the nutrients will still grow up to those big old beautiful leaves and those big old beautiful flowers and they produce at great numbers. And what happens is at the end of those flowers or under those flowers are seeds and those seeds will drop. But now I hurry up and go and pick up those seeds because I heard that the root system for those magnolia trees are not good for your foundation. They grow thick and strong so they will break the foundation, your sidewalk and everything else. So I'll go and rake them up and I make sure I put them in the trash. But what I'm saying is, but the tree, it blossoms so beautifully. And it's healthy. It looks all dark and green. The birds love that tree so much, they come and put their nests in the tree. All right. So that tree not only puts out a beautiful, fragrant flower, but it provides shelter for the birds. My God. In other words, your life is not for you. It's for the use that God would get the glory and provide a service for someone else. Right. 
But today's teaching is my life is about me, myself, and I. I don't need no one else, but then that contradicts the word of God. He says, every branch that bears fruit, he purges it that it may bring more fruit. The fruit that you are bringing will benefit everyone that beholds it because you are the light of God that's on a candle that sits on top of the hill. Everyone sees you. Everyone is looking. There's a reason why you smile, Sister Daniel. You smile because everyone is looking. And they're saying, why is she smiling? People ask, why are you smiling? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Don't feel sorry for me. Brother gets saved or sister gets saved because that's what it's about. Don't feel sorry for me. If I don't know Jesus, shame on me. If you don't know Jesus, shame on you. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Oh, you're a strong person. No, I'm just saved. I love the Lord. I'm weak. I, I count, uh, as Paul would say, I would count myself to be the worst of everyone in the room. Why? Because I know me. I don't know you. Yeah. See, y'all look all holy and sanctified. So when I go home, guess what? I say, Lord, I want to be holy and sanctified like Jones, 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 Harrison, and Jones. Seriously, we're too busy exalting ourselves. And I was in the Bible study, I was saying, so that's why, oh, I'm this and I'm that. No, you're out of order because God says, let someone else speak of what, who you are and what you are, not yourself. Why? Because then pride comes in and guess what? It brings a very a hard fall. But by reading the word, of our Lord and our Savior, then we would understand that. That there are things that we are doing that are counter to what God is telling us to do. He says, when you walk in the room, don't go to the chief seat. All right. It's best for you to be invited up than you to be asked to step down in front of everyone. But we still don't understand that meaning. Why would you put yourself in a position to be embarrassed? Because he says, in that day, they're going to say, Lord, did not cast out demons. I was up there praising and worshiping. Didn't you see me cut that step? And he's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Wait, 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 wait. You mean that doesn't worry you that God's going to tell the children of God, I never knew you? <laughs> so now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Your sanctification process come through the word of God. Right. It doesn't come through nothing else. He says, how can they preach unless they've been sent? But then there's a new generation. Oh, I don't need nobody. It's just me and Jesus. Well, baby, somebody lying here. Because he said you need to hear the word. Right. He says also, he says when you're going through, he says call the elders of the church. Oh, no, you call these teenagers now, and they're going to be the one to set you free. No, there's a process to this thing. God did not design you to be belittled. He designed you to elevate you in his word. As he elevates you, guess what? Then there's more fruit that you are bearing. Verse 4 is the kicker. He says, abide in me. How do you stay in Jesus without staying in Jesus? I, I don't understand. How do you stay in Jesus without staying in Jesus? It's just like me saying, oh, I got a house, but I'm sleeping under the bridge. Wait, wait, if I have a house, why am I sleeping under the bridge? Why am I walking the streets day in and day out, and I have a house that I can cast my soul at rest? He says, abide in me. In order for us to abide in Jesus, we have to understand that every second and every moment is a now. 
It's now. He says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This now faith means that God, although I, I see that I want something, what is the requirements, the requisite to get what I want? And if we would ask God, how do I get what I want? God would tell you, first, be faithful. All right, all right. He would say, first says, husband, you got to be faithful to your wife. Amen. He tells wives, you have to be faithful to your husband. He says that when y'all are not on one accord, guess what? Ding, 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 ding. Now, this is, the bell should be going off. He says when husband and wife are not on the same accord, then we hinder We hinder our blessings. So you want to know why you still going through? All right. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. You need to get back to abiding in Christ. Uh -huh. You want to know why it seemed like everything's so hard? You need to get back to abiding in Christ. We got to get back to finding out, oh God, what do I need to do that these things may come to pass? But we're not seeking what I need to do. It's easier for me to call my best friend and say, hey, I wish I could do this and such and such and such. And your best, oh, girl, I got you. Oh, boy, I got you. Oh, oh, homie, I got you. Let's go. You know, Jones, when he wants some breakfast, he calls. I ain't going to tell you who he called, but he always want to go to the Waffle House, y'all. Yeah, but y'all didn't hear that from me. Yes, you did. You heard it from me. But he's supposed to. Why? Because the Bible told him he that has friends must first show himself friendly. He has shown himself friendly. So now there's someone he can go to that will show himself friendly back. But that is the process of having friends. The process of having friends is you must first show yourself friendly. A regulating spirit is good, but not at all times. <laughs> you hear me, first lady? Yeah, Amen. It's okay to regulate, but you have to first show yourself friendly before you start regulating. Because I'm my regulator. Boy, she regulates. <laughs> and you know what? I've learned to be content in all things that God has blessed me with. He says, now that you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto oh, you, God. abide in me. In other words, so whatever challenge you have today, what is G the word that Christ has spoken in his manual that he's given you? You have to pull it up. You have to be able to research what God says about different things. Why? Because they are life-changing, life-saving, and it will keep your mind. He says, abide in me and I in you. So now every time I start seeking God and I read his word and I start to understand, okay, God, man, that's good and that's powerful. Then what happens is God's word is now being stored in your heart. Now that God's word is in your heart, what happens is then when you come up to certain situations, what happens is you apply God's word to your heart. Right. See, the word of God tells me. Kind words would do away with a lot of strife. All right. Why is it that when you're in a situation, our words get worse? Why is it that if kind words will remove strife out of the equation, do I show you how bad I am? You know, when my wife, she, she's telling me something, why do I get ignorant with her if Kind words would do away with strife. Not only does kind words do away with strife, but he's already told me, go to my rooftop. Why would I not go to my rooftop? 
Because God says it's best to be in the rooftop, but everybody thinks God says it's best to quit. That's not what God is. God didn't make you to quit. He says you're the head. You're not the tail. You don't have to quit. This too shall pass. The battle is not yours, but it's the Lord. Well, how is God going to fight the battle when God ain't even in you? But if you're in God, then you rest assured God's going to fight the battle. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Here's, 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 the, uh, uh, here's a, a brief story. Saul, <coughs> excuse me. Saul, when he was uh, appointed king, what did God do? God sent Saul, go, go, his father said, go look for the horse that's missing. I'm just using horse, I'm paraphrasing, you know, we're not quoting the word verbatim the scripture. I'm just giving you the story. He says, hey, we got some horses that's missing, go look for the horses. And so as Saul was out, well, guess what they did? They sent him his servant. Well, a servant is, a, you know, in other words, for Anyhow, so they sent the servant with them, and the servant was a Hebrew. All right. Just like Saul was a Hebrew. Uh -huh. You get it? But yet he still was a servant. And so he says, I heard that there's a man of God over there. Go ask him. Now, come on. How many of you would go ask the preacher, where, where did you leave your car? Oh, preacher, I need a job. Wait, wait, there, there's something to that now. I don't know if y'all read the word, but there's something to asking the man or woman of God. But now Saul went to the man of God like the servant told him, and guess what? He walked away anointed king. God, there's some kings in the room. There's some kings and queens under the sound of my voice. But the tragedy is we think kings and queen means today and right this second. And, oh, I'm a king. No. Didn't you just hear me say don't exalt yourself? God says not to do it. Let someone else appoint you king. But Saul did not abide in his anointing like he started. When he started, he was obeying. But as he got big in himself, then he became impatient with God. Y'all thought I was talking about he's impatient with Samuel. But Samuel was representing God. And Samuel had gave instruction that God had gave him. So if God abides in you, then you're able to give instruction that God gave you that's going to cause the success of what's ever around you because God said it. Now, we have a little uh, a little measure of success. Oh, yeah, you're going to be king. And how many of us have gotten the big head just off of the announcement and lost the prize? Yes, sir. Yeah. Mm. That's why God says, okay, Saul, since you obeyed me multiple times because your heart was not to seek me, he says, I found someone that will represent me. All right. My question, in order for you to abide in Christ, are you the one that God's saying will represent me? No. You the one? So he called David. Now, he didn't call David because David was perfect. See, it says in Job that Job was perfect and upright and eschewed evil. He ran. If, it, if he thought it was bad, he did not do it. How many of y'all like that? I'm not raising my hand, but how many of y'all like that? I would like to raise my hand, but I can't say that I run uh, from evil. I mean, I'm not saying I walk into evil. I just got to be honest with you. 
Am I that man of God that eschewed evil? In other words, if I thought a food was sin, would I not eat it? You get it? If I thought going to the bingo hall was sin, would I still go? Now, I don't go to the bingo hall, and I don't eat anything that's offered a sacrifice to devils knowingly because he says don't ask questions. But this modern generation likes to ask questions and try to put everybody on blast. Wait, you mean you would condemn a nation instead of exalt the nation? Hmm. David was full of flesh. Flesh. I, I'm, yeah, flesh. How many of y'all, now, come on. Y'all can raise your hand if y'all want to and you don't have to. But how many of you have more than two or three Cokes a week? Because Coke is bad for your body. But we love talking about that Jack Ripple or that Ripple like Fred G. Sanford be talking about that Ripple and, and whatever else. But wait, wait, what about the Coke? The Sprite or the Pepsi, the Dr. Pepper. What about the, that, that carbonation that's going in your body that's, that's just bad for you? What about the sweet, sweet juices and drinks that's causing us to go rampant with health problems? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's easy if I talk about a cocaine because that ain't me, right? Because I don't do cocaine. So let's talk about cocaine instead of about everyday life, yeah. things that we deal with. In other words, first lady, do I eat to live or do I live to eat? Because there's a difference. By us abiding in Christ, we'll understand that there is a thing uh, that is right and pleasing unto the Lord, but then there are things that are not. The question is, what is not pleasing that God has said stop? God has told him to stop just like he told me to go. He's told me to stop just like he told him to go. The question is, just like he told the prophet, he says, I want you to go and deliver a word, Sister Deja. Go, go, tell, go tell them, thus says the Lord. He says, don't eat. Don't drink. Don't stop. Don't go into no one home. You go deliver the word and you leave. Wait, didn't you understand? He lost his life because, oh, someone else said, well, the Lord told me to do it, and he lost his life that day. Abiding in Christ, it's, it's not a, it's, it's a group thing when we come under the leadership of Pastor Jones, but when you're at home on your knees, or uh, when you're in the shower singing praises to the Lord, when you're cooking and worshiping God, what is God saying to you? Because that's when you're in the presence of the Lord. It's not I'm in the presence of the Lord because I'm at the city. No, I'm in the presence of the Lord because I'm saying, God, help me, change me, fix me, heal me, break the yokes off of me, off of my seed. Because, God, I was a sinner and I caused a curse on my children, but break the yokes right now in Jesus' name. In order for me to abide in Christ, then what? Is he telling me next? Yeah. Jones always has says, I mean, Brother Jones, you know, y'all want y'all see something flying across the pulpit. Brother Jones says, What did the Lord tell you? It's important that you hear what God is saying, because if you hear what God is saying, then you're in abiding in. Christ and he's abiding yeah, in yeah. you. Yes, sir. Yes. You, I'm going to end this thing. But just because you are doing something don't mean that you're doing it for God. And everybody think just because I'm going and I did this and I did that I quoted the scripture. It's in two, I think it's in Matthew and Mark. He says, in that day, I will profess I never knew you. And in the other one, he says, I'll claim I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Just because you're doing something don't mean you're doing it for God.
I end with this story. That you would see it vividly. In Matthew chapter 25 verses 1 through 13. He talks about the ten versions. Here's the, the moral of the story. You either is baby or you not. Because five of them had oil for the journey. Who goes on the journey and don't put gas in the car? Who goes to, to run a, a marathon but never prepare themselves? You've got to prepare yourself now for the journey. Because when, he, when that door opened, whoever is ready and made their way to the door is going to go in. But if you're not ready, then it's going to be too late. Put the oil in your lamp now. Read God's word for yourself now. Go and hear the preachers preach and teach now that you may get a deeper understanding. Because the Holy Ghost is waiting to impart God's wisdom in your life. He says, if you will listen to me, he says, I'll show you great and mighty things. He says, if you call unto me, I'll show you great and mighty things which you don't even know. But you'll know it because I've been in Christ. And Christ now is in me. And then Biden and Christ, I got to testify, I'm still married because of Christ. You don't have to understand it. But one day you might understand, my kids are still alive because of Christ. Matter of fact, I might have just one eye and one hand, but I'm still here because of Christ. He says you will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Why would I not tell you that Jesus lived when he spared my life to tell you that he lives? Why would I not tell you that Jesus saved when I, I'm a living witness that he saved me? Why would I not tell you that Jesus answered prayers and God answered prayers when because when the doctor says that I was dying and marched on March the 12th in 2016 that when, when my wife called and the church started praying, guess what? I'm still here eight years later. They said, ma'am, he won't make it through the night, but because because of the prayers of the righteous. Yes. God says that he will live and not die. He will still declare the works of the Lord. Because I created him for my good pleasure. You still thinking you about you. Baby, it's not about you. It's about what God has for you to do. So you keep telling them that Jesus saved. You keep telling them that that's not right. You keep telling them that there is a better way because Jesus is coming. And by the words of your testimony, <laughs> you will reap. Your crowns in heaven. I hope that you're encouraged that, man, I need to really find out what God is saying. And God, I want to abide in you so that you can abide in me. He tells us to study to be quiet. I'm saying that because just because I know something does not always mean that it's an appropriate time to say something. Because he tells us as servants of the Most High God to be wise as serpents but harmless as doves. And sometimes what we say out of season will cause more damage then it will help. Why? Because your life itself is the testimony. You are the book of Jones that they're reading. I am the book. Missionaries, the book of Harris's. They read our lives 
versus us telling them everything that they did wrong. You want to know why? Because I said something about my pastor this morning. So how can I tell you about being right and wrong? I was thinking about donuts this morning, first lady. So how am I going to tell you whether you love the Lord or not because you're talking about or thinking about something else? You get it? He says, first get that beam out of your eye. You're looking at the speck because you see a speck, but you got to first deal with the beam. In other words, this soul salvation is about me, myself, and I. And I first got to get right with God for myself. Yeah. And then as the Holy Spirit gives unction, then I'll speak with thus says the Lord. I, I, I'm finished. I, I, I'm not finished. I'm quitting because it's just time to quit. You know, uh, I'm not finished. We could stay up here another two hours. But I got a couple of people looking at me, and you know, and what they do when I look at make eye contacts, they drop their head. Because, you know, everybody's want to roll their eyes. Ain't that right? Yeah, see, one of them smiling already. Two of them smiling. Yeah, they be like, uh, you. So, you know what? Let us abide in Christ. Amen? Amen. We're finished.